Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start the Search of Kadath. This is Quest 2A in our Dream Eaters campaign. We're going to be playing with Luke and with Tony. We have a total of 9 XP to spend, but don't forget, Luke has two of these arcane researches. So that means the first spell he purchases is reduced um, XP cost by two because we have two of these. So for Luke, what we did is we're going to replace both of our regular rights of seeking with powered up rights of seeking. Now this will only cost us two XP to do both of these. This first one's going to be free. It's just giving us a little more of a power and we can collect two clues. I like that. So that was two XP. We're going to add another three for charisma. So that's five. And then we're going to add the Jewel of Aurelius and four cups. So that's six, seven, eight, and nine. The two other cards we're going to take out are the Holy Rosary and then these Rite of Seekings. Now for Tony, the fun part is we're not going to change his deck at all. We're going to go ahead and just get three permanents. We're going to get another day, another dollar. It's a permanent. You begin each game with two additional resources. So we're going to start with four additional resources because of that. And we're grabbing Charisma. I wanted to do that this time because I want some more money. And then next round or next time we can level up, I'm going to look for some Sanity Soak and probably something to use all that money with. You stay the night at Enar's place. Your rest is anything but peaceful. Even if one could sleep within a dream, you certainly do not. Your mind teems with anxiety over the quest looming ahead. You reflect on the black cat's warning about danger in the wakening world, and you wonder about the others who have followed Virgil Grey down the steps of slumber and through the enchanted woods. Are they here now too? Perhaps if you find this castle and return with the proof of the dreamlands, you can save everyone, yourself, your friends, and other dreamers as well. We need to check our campaign log. We don't have the black cat at our side. I think we sent it to our other team. So then we have, if the above is not true and Luke Robinson is in the group, and it is, let's go to intro three. In the morning, you find Virgil and Randolph talking in the town square outside of Enar's place. You still aren't quite sure what to think of either of them, but you have a good sense of where you should go next. After all, this is not your first excursion in the fabled land of dreams. Addressing Randolph, you suggest talking to the high priest Atoll in the nearby temple of the Elder Ones. It's a name you heard the last time you visited the city of Ulthar in your sleep, though until now you had no reason to seek the priest's advice. Randolph gives you a startled glance that transforms quickly into a smirk. How curious, he says. I was about to suggest the same. Atoll is wise beyond all our measure. He may know where to find the place we seek. Virgil, eager to embark on his adventure, claps his hands. Well, what are we waiting for? This way, my friends. You nod and head for the temple, a circular tower of ivory stone crowning the highest hill in the town. A small army of cats patrolled its walls. The cat at the head of the formation is none other than the old cat with the scar you encountered in the woods earlier. He steps forward to bar your entry and regards your party with great acrimony. Hello again, the old cat says with a sharp tone. I suppose you want me to step aside? If the investigators parlayed with the Zooks, or if the investigators were saved by Randolph Carter, skip to intro 5. If the cats collected their tribute, skip to 6. And I believe, yep, they, cl they collected their tribute. You tell the cat that you are merely here to speak with Atal, and that you mean no harm. Ah, uh, no worries, human, the cat says with a gaping yawn. The kind only a cat can perform and still look regal in the act. You don't seem the type to make much trouble. Besides, I ain't going nowhere. You see a small lump in front of the cat, a bloodied half-eaten pheasant. You resist the urge to turn up your nose and count yourself lucky you are on this cat's good side. Go on in, he says, then licks his chops as he prepares to finish his meal. At the top of the temple, seated on an ivory dais, the high priest Atal awaits you. He is a frail, wiry man with a long, wispy black beard, caved in cheeks, and the pale, milky eyes of an afflicted by blindness. <laughs> Do not let your eyes deceive you, Randolph whispers as you seat yourself in front of the dais. Adel is over there, centuries old, but his memory is sharp as a tack. You ask the priest about your quest and about your destination, the castle Randolph described from his dreams. You speak of the resting place of the Great Ones, high above unknown Kadath. Even I know not its true location, and that is all well and good, for the fruits of attempting to ascend to such a place would be bitter indeed. My companion, Berzai, once scaled a peak only a fraction as sacred, and he has never seen nor heard from again. The gods of Kadath may seem powerless, but they are protected by the other gods from the outside, whom it is better not to discuss. It would be wiser to let all the gods alone and to leave this folly behind. 
Adel's use of the words gods has you curious. You wonder aloud what kind of god might exist in a place like this. The priest shakes his head. They are not our gods, but the gods of earth, for this land is but a reflection of yours. You attempt to pry deeper into Adel's wisdom from your questioning, but his advice does not budge. I have already said more than I should, he insists. Please, for your sake, pursue this madness no further. In your campaign log next to Evidence of Kadath, record one tally mark. Oh, okay. Then we check our campaign log again. If the cats collected their tribute, we can go ahead and skip to intro 11. Adult refuses to give you any more advice, so you decide to leave the temple on the hilltop behind. We have learned much, but we are still no closer to knowing the location of Kadath, Randolph says with a sigh. It is likely that our destination is far from here, perhaps on another continent altogether. We shall need to secure passage by sea if we are to travel such great distances. I suggest we begin by traveling south to the port of Dyloth Lean. We can figure out our next steps from there. Proceed to setup. We need to gather all the cards from these encounter sets, put Ulthar, Ska River, and Dyloth Lean into play. Each investigator begins in Ulthar. Set each other location aside out of play. Set the following enemies aside, the Cats of Ulthar, Stalking Manticore, the Crawling Mist, Horde of Knights, the Beans of Im, both copies of Tenebrius Nightgaunt, both copies of Cosair of Lang, and all three copies of the Priest of a Thousand Masks. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. Uh, search the gathered encounter sets for one copy of the Pack of Vumis and spawn it at the Ska River. If there are three or four more investigators, we can ignore that. The lead investigator takes control of Virgil Gray, and then shuffle the remaini- remainder of the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. I'll have Tony be our lead investigator. We have Virgil Gray here. He has one health and three sanity. He has the ability that after one or more signs of the gods are uncovered, either draw one card, gain one resource, or heal one horror from Virgil Gray. If there is more than one investigator in the game, give this control to the, no- the next character. If Virgil Gray is defeated, remove him from the game. Each of the locations in this scenario have no unrevealed side, and therefore they enter play with the revealed side face up. Instead of an unrevealed side, these locations have story cards on the rever- reverse side. Whenever a location in this scenario enters play, including during setup, place clues on that location equal to the clue value as normal. Locations can be flipped over in one of two ways. Most are flipped over by the veiled keyword as described below. Some locations are instead flipped over by an ability printed on the location itself. Once a location has been flipped over and its story text has been read, it cannot be flipped over again for the remainder of the game, unless noted otherwise. Many of the locations in this scenario have the veiled keyword. This keyword represents that a location contains unknown lore or assistance that must be sought out by investigators before it can be any of use to them. As a free action ability, an investigator at a veiled location with no clues on it may then flip that location over, resolving the text on the other side. Cool. Here we have our three locations. We're both going to start at Ulthar. At the Sky River, we have our pack of Vuniths, and it has a swarming one. So since Tony is our first player, I'm going to have to lose the top card of my deck, and I'll put it underneath him as the swarm. But remember, we'll get that back uh, after we kill him, hopefully. And that considers just basically another one of these enemies. So there's two, two, uh, two, two health enemies here. Despite the advice of the Dreamland's inhabitants, you and your companions seek unknown Kadath, where the gods dwell. Over fertile plains rolling down the sky, we saw the smoke of cottage chimneys, and on every hand were the hedges and plowed fields and thatched roofs of peaceful land. Uh, so we have, we can take an action here. If you're at a port location, resign. Venturing into an unknown has become too dangerous, so we can always run away. Seven Doom. And then here we have an objective. At the end of the round, investigators at a port location may spend the required number of clues as a group to advance. We need a total of four. We need four, and we need to be at a port location. And you can see here, we have skulls. X is the number of signs of the gods the investigators have uncovered. So at the beginning, we don't have any, so it's going to be easy. The cultists reveal another token. If this token is revealed during an investigation and the skill test fails, increase that location's shroud by one for the remainder of the round. We do have this rock, minus two if you fail, either take one damage and one horror, or place one doom on the current agenda. And I don't think we have any of these squiggly guys, uh, because the black cat is not with us. So unfortunately we don't get a plus two, that would be amazing. Let's draw our hands up to five, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start with Tony, and we have uh, prepared for the worst. We've got Randolph Carter right here, and remember we have Christmas, we can have two we can have two allies. So we have Virgil Gray and we can have Randolph. Oh, our twin Colts, the Tennessee Sour Mash, and the Steadfast. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, that's great. Do I want to drop prepared for the worst? Uh, maybe I will. So I did this raw in the last three playthroughs. I will remove this card, draw a new one, and we get the 41 Derringer. And then what I'll do is I'll shuffle this card back into my deck. <laughs> last time I was doing it almost Lord of the Rings style, where I shuffled whatever I didn't want to keep in my hand and then drew new cards. I, it's hard. I get them all confused. <laughs> Now let's set up Luke. We'll draw our five cards. Remember that one, two, three, four, five. Luke has two mental trauma already, so he only has a total of seven sanity. Uh, we'll draw, draw our five. We've got Calling in Favors, Storm of the Spirits. We've got Rite of Seeking. Oh yes, that's good. David Reinfeld and the Jewel of Aurelius. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe we'll get rid of the Storm of Spirits. So I'll just uh, put that aside. Oh, we'll get the Hawkeye camera. That's beautiful. Then we'll go ahead and shuffle this in. Let's go ahead and start off with Luke. I think the first thing we're going to do is spend four resources to put our right of seeking down. That means we're only going to have one left. I think I had six on there. I should only have five. So I have one left. This will gain three charges. Then I think I'm going to do some investigating, but I'm going to do regular investigation because our intellect is three. Yeah, our wisdom is four, but we're only at a shroud one location. Seems like a waste to use our right of seeking for that. So let's go ahead and just do a, a couple regular investigations. Currently, our investigation is three. So we'll spend that action and we'll draw a zero. Beautiful. So I'll pick this one up. And then for our third action, we'll do the same thing. Let's see what we get. We get another zero. Awesome. So that means we've collected both clues. We can then, for a free action, because this is veiled, let's flip it over. As you walk the streets of the town, a horde of cats slowly congregate around you, following you everywhere you go. Check the campaign log. If the cats collected their tribute, which they have, read the following. One by one, the cats demand a tribute in the form of physical affection. <laughs> Despite the urgency of your task, they rub against your legs, leap onto your lap, and do not leave until they are thoroughly adored. <laughs> Lose all your remaining actions and end your turn. Beautiful, I didn't have any actions left. That is awesome. I love that. Then we have on the bottom of the card, uh, regardless, flip this card back over. Okay, cats, now that you've been thoroughly adored, let's go ahead and move to Tony's turn. I think for Tony's turn, all we're going to do is prepare for the next round. So we're going to spend all nine of our resources. We're going to put out Randolph Carter because he's going to give us plus one to our attack and plus one to our agility. We're going to put out our Tony's 38 Long Colt. Unfortunately, we don't have the other one in our hand because we could have played it at no cost. This will get three ammo. And then our final one we're going to put out is our Tennessee Sour Mash just because it's going to help us with any of our willpower tests. But that was three, three, three. So we'll have no resources. Totally useful though. That'll end our investigation phase. We'll move to the enemy phase. There is an enemy out, but that enemy does not have Hunter. So it's just gonna chill in the Ska River. Then what we'll do is we'll move to the upkeep phase. We'll reset everything, ready all of our characters. We each will get to gain one resource. That means Luke will have two and Tony will have one. And then we'll each draw a card. So Luke will grab, oh, I don't like drawing this one, the Astounding Revelation. And Tony will grab another Tennessee Sour Mash. Awesome. Our hand size is less than eight. So now what we do is we move to the Mythos phase. First thing, let's place our first Doom. After doing that, let's draw our two encounter cards. Our first card will be for Tony. And we get the Whispers of Hypnos. I feel like I've seen this one before. <laughs> uh, we have Perils. So we have to decide without talking to Luke. Choose a skill. For the remainder of the round, each investigator gets minus two on that chosen skill. You cannot choose a skill that has already been chosen. Yeah, we'll definitely do our agility because we both stink at that. So that means Luke has a one and Tony has a zero. Luke's card will then be the Dreamlands Eclipse. Put Dreamlands Eclipse into play next to the agenda deck. When you initiate an investigation, you must either take one horror or your location gets plus two shroud for this investigation. At the end of the round, discard this. Hmm, not terrible. To start our next round, looking here, the only location that Ulthar is connected to is the Ska River. So let's go ahead and start with Tony. We're going to have him move into the Ska River. Now, the Ska River has a uh, two shroud and no clues. It has a forest. When you attempt to leave the Ska River, if it has not yet been flipped, test these two items, either your willpower or agility. If you fail, flip this card over and resolve the text on the other side. Ooh. But the big thing that's going to happen is we have our pack of Vuneths here. They will automatically engage us because we're in this same location. 
I forgot, you guys, our agility is actually 1, not 0, because we do have Randolph, and he adds plus 1 to our agility. So, that's cool. But we're going to go ahead and attack him. He only has 2 health and only 1 for his combat. I feel bad about this, but I think I'm still going to use 1 of our ammo on our Tony's 38. We get plus 1 to our strength, so our strength is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and then this attack deals plus 1 damage. So that would allow us to kill him, well, kill the, the swarm, I guess. Unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to use 2 bullets to actually get rid of him. I only have 1 bullet left then. Ah, it is what it is. I don't want him hanging around. So let's go ahead and draw. We've got a 7 to a 1. Uh, we get, ooh, the cultist. So the cultist says, reveal another token. So let's reveal another token, and we get a minus two. We have seven minus two, six, five, so we succeed. And this says if it's revealed during an investigation, I don't have to worry about that. We just dealt two damage, so that will take out this swarm, and that goes onto the bottom of our deck. Cool. Then let's go ahead and shoot again using another one of our bullets. Still kind of sad about that. <laughs> we will draw from the bag, and we get an auto fail. Oh, so we totally missed him. You jerk. So that means, well, he doesn't have retaliates. He doesn't attack back. That means we're going to, well, that's actually our third action. So he's going to be able to attack us back. And I should mention, he has plus two fight now and plus two evade because there's only one of them left. So yeah, and he's going to attack us. Bummer. Now, as much as Luke would love to help Tony, not going to happen. My attack value is only two. Those guys now have a three fight yeah, it just doesn't seem worth it. I think he can soak a one hit of physical and mental. Yeah, I mean, he's got two allies too. So we're just going to spend one action to move here. We're going to use our second action to try and move because I believe, yep, this is connected to Dylene. But in order for us to do that, we need to test. We're going to test our uh, willpower. Fortunately for us, our willpower is four. So it's going to be a test of four to two. Let's see what we get. We'll flip. Oh, star, are you serious? So that's actually awesome. We get to um, get a plus one and place one charge on the gate box. That means the gate box now has four charges on it. Of course, I didn't have any on it initially. Sorry about that. We moved over to this location. We have an action here where we can spend one resource to search the top six cards of your deck for an item asset and draw it, then shuffle your deck. I don't think I really need that. I might actually use that for Tony, though. He can maybe find another weapon, considering I've dropped two bullets and couldn't even take out a 2-1 guy. <laughs> uh, for our third action, I could try and go for those clues. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. I think that's a good idea, because then we can do the Veiled as well this round and kind of know what's happening. Oh, wait. I almost forgot about this. I don't want to do that. I'll either have to take one Horror or it gets plus two Shroud. That would make that a five. We would be cluing for a total of four plus two, six. Six to a five is pretty tight. So I think instead I'm going to use my two resources. We'll use our two resources to play David Reinfeld. Now, while David has at least one Doom on him, you'll get plus one Willpower. Doom. That's I'm playing, I'm playing with fire then. We can exhaust him, and you may place one Doom on him and gain one resource for each Doom on David. Should we have a little fun with David? I think so. We're going to end this round with doing a free action. We're going to exhaust him, put a Doom on him to generate one resource for us. Next round then, what I can do, do that same thing, gain another resource, but then play Calling in Favors. That will allow us to swap him out, and we can get rid of that Doom. Hopefully. <laughs> We've finished our investigation phase. We're now going to move to the enemy phase, and these packs of Vumis are going to attack, and we're going to put them both on Randolph Carter. Actually, no, we'll put one mental on Virgil, because he'll heal that potentially. So we'll put one mental on Virgil, and we'll do one physical. Yeah, Randolph has three health, so one physical on Randolph. Awesome. Yeah, you know, allies are amazing in this game. They're amazing in all of the FFG LCGs. <laughs> We'll then move to upkeep. We'll ready all of our exhausted cards. That means David's ready. We'll each draw a card and generate a resource. You can see Tony has two, and so does Luke. So we will draw the prepared for the worst for Tony, and then we will draw the four cups card. Wow, I've got a bunch of my level up cards. That's fun. The four cups card for Luke. That'll end the round. Because of that, we can discard this Dreamlands Eclipse. Thank goodness. And then we'll go ahead and drop another Doom here. And then let's go ahead and draw our encounter cards. We'll start flipping encounter cards. Tony will be first. He's got the Furtive Zoog. Spawn, engage with the investigator at your location with the lowest strength. Well, the thing is, is 
He's the only one at that location. Uh, he preys on the lowest strength, and then retaliate and swarming one. That means we're going to have to put this card underneath it. I'll go ahead and put one bounty on that. That's the max I can do. We can put one to three bounties on one of these enemies equal to their health at max. So that's why we can only put one. Luke will draw the Law of Yigroth Discord. Peril hidden. Secretly add this card to your hand. You cannot commit cards to skill tests with an odd number of total skill icons on them. Huh. Discard a player card with an even number of skilled icons, and then you can discard this card. Not terrible, but annoying. We'll start with Tony this round, and let's have him do what he does best. Punch some things. <laughs> or shoot them. We're going to shoot with our Tony's 38 Long Colt against this pack of Vumiths first. Uh, that will do two points of damage, and if we defeat him, since we're doing it with our Long Colts, we'll actually gain a bounty token, which would be nice. I just have to not draw that auto-fail token again. That would uh, be pretty terrible. Oh, we got the Cultist, which means we have to draw another token, and instead we get the Rock, and the rock is minus two, uh, and if you fail, take one damage and one horror. But we're at a total of five, six, seven. Minus two is six, five. This is a three. We just dealt two damage, took him out, no problem. And that will gain us one resource that we can put that on our bounty. Now, unfortunately, our Tony's 38 Long Colt is totally out of ammo. So we can just go ahead and punch this guy. We're at a total of five plus one, which is six. Six to a three. Let's see what we can get for action two, a minus one. Uh, five to a three, we will deal one point of damage. He only has one health, so we'll get rid of the swarm. And that's our card, so we'll simply put that on the bottom of our deck. And then for our third and final action, let's punch him one more time. <laughs> Come on, and we get a star. That's a plus two, and then place one bounty on the bounty contracts. Awesome, so we'll get a bounty. We'll put that onto here. And then we'll generate a resource because of that. So it'll be our third resource and this guy's toast. With Luke over here, let's start with David. We'll place another Doom on him and gain two more resources. That gives us a total of four Doom. We do not want to get to seven. Now, I do need to mention, if we did get to seven, let's say right now, it would be no problem until we went to the Mythos phase. When we go to the Mythos phase is when we check how much Doom there is. So we can be really risky, get all the way to seven Doom before we try and do something with David. And what I'm planning on doing is calling in some favors. So, but we'll wait to do that until I get as many resources as I can from him. <laughs> Action one then this round is we're going to go ahead and put our Hawkeye folding camera out. That's going to cost us two resources. And after the last clue is discovered from your location, place one resource on this card. And while it has one, we can get plus one to our willpower. That's really what we're hoping for. Action two, we're going to use one of these charges from the right of seeking. We'll spend one charge and investigate. The investigator uses their willpower, which is four plus one because David has at least one doom on him. So it's a five. Uh, and we get to use that instead. And then we get a plus two. So actually we're, we're doing this for seven. And then if you succeed, you discover one additional clue at this location. If I reveal any of these tokens after this test resolves, I will lose all remaining actions and end my turn. So I still would technically have one action now unless I reveal any of those tokens. Seven to a three. Let's go ahead and reveal a chaos token. And we get a minus four. Seven, six, five, four, three. <laughs> we tied, but a tie works. Oh my gosh. We'll collect both these clues. And what's great is we didn't reveal any of the non-numbered tokens. So that means we still have our third action. Let's then for a free action flip this because we, we are going to unveil this. In the port city of Dyloth Lean, you consult with the elder of the city. They believe that the truth of Kadath was hidden for a reason, and they call you a fool for searching for it. Even so, they tell you what little they know of the Forsaken Peak. Though you are far from finding Kadath, it is clear now that it cannot be in this region. We'll need to find a ship, Captain, Randolph muses. The journey will be much longer still. The Isle of Oriab lies to the south, and I have heard of a great mountain there. To the west lies the ancient land of Minar, where many secrets lie hidden. To the east is the timeless realm, ruled by the wise King Cronus. North of there is a forbidden land where none dared tread. You have uncovered a sign of the gods. Place one resource on the scenario reference card to indicate this. For the remainder of the scenario, resources on the scenario reference card represent sign of the gods the investigators may have uncovered. Your quest is to uncover as many of these signs as you can in order to discern the location of Kadath. Flip this card over. We have our first resource here. Let's continue collecting them. Let's find as many clues as we can. <laughs> I have no idea what it's going to do, but I'm sure it's going to be a good thing. 
For our final action, I think I'm going to go ahead and just generate a resource. That means we have three, and then at the beginning of the round we'll have four. We can play some more of our cards, because really we are resourced starved. <laughs> We'll then go ahead and move to the enemy phase. There's no enemies out on the board. And then we'll jump to the upkeep phase. Luke will have four resources and so will Tony. We'll each draw a card and we have David for Luke and we have Vicious Blow for Tony. We're now at the end of the round. So the investigators at a port location and Dothleen is definitely a port location. We can spend the four clues, which we have thanks to Luke and we can advance. We find a captain willing to grant you passage to the remote regions of the Dreamlands, wherein you may find signs from the gods to point you in the direction of Kadath. Search the encounter deck discard pile in all play areas for the Cats of Ulthar, each pack of Vunmits, and each card from the Zoog's encounter set and remove them from the game. Shuffle each set-aside copy of the Priest of a Thousand Mask into the encounter deck, along with the encounter discard pile. Then we have to choose, visit the Isle of Orb, uh, visit the ancient hand of Minar, or visit the forbidden lands to the north. Hmm. Since I really have no idea where I should be going, let's go to the first one, the Oriabs to the south. So we'll resolve the Oriabs setup in the campaign guide. For the Oriabs setup, each investigator loses all their clues. Yeah, we have that. Remove each location and play from the game, or place it in the victory display. We don't have any of those. Each enemy and attachment at those locations are discarded. Investigators are not defeated during this process. Put each set-aside Oriab location into play. There's going to be those three. Place each investigator at the Barna. Search the encounter deck for one copy of the Knight Riders and spawn it at Mount Negranic. If there are three or four investigators, we can ignore that. And then we have shuffled the encounter deck. And then we have to advance the agenda, or the act, to 2A, the Isle of Oriab. To the south lies the small but thriving volcanic island of Oriab, dominated by the dormant volcano called Nagamik. The Bay of Baharna, marked by the twin lighthouses Thorn and Thal overlooks the southern sea. Objective, find and uncover as many signs of the gods in this region as you can. At the end of the round, if each investigator is at the same port's location, the other one didn't say at the same one, right? It didn't. Uh, you may move to another region by advancing this act. Objective, if, this, if the investigators have uncovered 10 signs of gods, uh, then we can proceed to R1. Boy, 10 of them. We found one. We have nine more to go. <laughs> now, I am just going to show you this. I'm going to place my third Doom on here, plus the two on David. That's a total of five. Now, let's go ahead and look at the board. We have a Knight Rider here in this location. It does have Swarming 1. I used Tony's deck again, since he's the first player. Uh, that's at Mount Negranic. Then, we're at Baharna right here. We need a two Shroud. That's actually not bad. We can collect some clues, I think. Yes, Victory 1. These are all victory locations, so I'm going to probably want to eat up these clues. Look at this place. It's a five, though. Uh, after you end your turn here, you have to deal one direct damage to an ally asset you control. Ouch. But before we do anything, let's go ahead and draw our encounter cards. Our first card here is for Tony, and we have Hunted by Corsairs. A revelation. Attach Hunted by Corsairs to the current act. When the act advances, each investigator takes two damage. Attached act gains, you can test your intellect for, or test your agility for to sneak past them. If you succeed, discard hunting by Corsairs. Ooh, man, that actually kind of sucks, because Luke only has five health. <laughs> now, I don't have to worry about it right now, because that's when the act advances. We just moved to a new act. Then we have the Song of Maga Bird. Attached to your location, after you move out of the attached location, take one horror, place one doom on the current agenda, and discard Song of Mag Maga Bird. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Or you can spend an action and test your willpower to resist the call or your might to drive off the birds. If you succeed, discard this. Ugh, that's still, that's annoying. <laughs> Let's start with Luke again this round. First thing we're going to do, exhaust David, and we're going to generate three more beautiful resources, and we're going to exhaust them. That's a free action. Our first action then is we're definitely going to call in favors. Choose an ally asset you control and return it to your hand. Then search the top nine cards of your deck for an ally asset and play it, reducing the cost by X. X is the cost of the ally asset that you put back into your hand. Beautiful. So we'll spend one resource. We'll get rid of all of this doom and we'll put this back into our hand. Oh, and while I'm doing this, I do want to mention that I did complete, uh, I got the last clue out of a location. So we now have plus one willpower due to our Hawk, Hawkeye camera. We'll go ahead and draw our top nine, and let's see, we have a Mr. Rook, beautiful, and we have, that should, that's it. So 
I was hoping for one of those my red ones where we search our deck, but no, of course I don't have that. So we will have to pay one for him. We can do that. And he'll come out with three secrets. Of course, we can exhaust him and spend one secret to look at the top three, six, or nine cards of our deck. Draw one, put it in our hand. But if we get a weakness, we have to do the weakness as well. I think then our second action is we're going to put out the Jewel of Aurelius here. It's going to cost us three resources, and this is one of our new cards. After any of these symbols are revealed, uh, what we can do during a skill test at our location, so it can even be for Tony, if Tony and Luke are in the same location, we can draw one card or gain two resources. Beautiful. Our third and final action, it seems like a waste, but I still think I'm going to do it. We're going to spend our second right of Seeking Charge. We're going to add two to our willpower. Our willpower currently is four plus one because of the Hawkeye folding camera. That's five. And then we'll add two from the right of seeking for seven. And we can collect two clues here if we succeed. And we're going to get uh, a skull, which that's fine with me. I'll go ahead and use this. This states that if we have the skull, we can either draw one card or gain two resources. Let's go ahead and gain two resources. That'll put us to four resources. This does mean that we have to end our activation after this. Uh, and then we have X as the number of uh, signs that we have found. We've only found one. So we went down to six. That's more than enough to collect both these clues. Unfortunately, since this ends our turn, even though this is a veiled location and we could for a free action flip this, our turn is done. But the nice thing is Tony's turn isn't done. So let's go ahead and flip at the beginning of his turn. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and flip it at the beginning of his turn. The city of Bahana is a thriving and bustling harbor where you can find all manner of trade and goods, provisions and other wares. In the marketplace you find supplies that may aid you in the expedition to lands farther south, as well as beasts of burden to carry your belongings. It should not surprise you that the most common of these creatures are zebras, and yet you are stunned nonetheless. You could spend days perusing the bazaar and still find oddities to spark your imagination. Truly, this land is a land of wonders. Each investigator at Baharna may return an item or supply card from their discard pile to their hand. Hmm. Remember that the investigators have obtained supplies from Baharna. Flip this card back over. Now I really wish I had discarded my Tony's 38 Long Colt, because I could have gotten that back into my hand. But no, uh, we didn't get anything, because neither of us have any of that in our discard pile. Action one for Tony is he's going to try and get rid of this Song of Maga Bird. He's going to spend one action and use his strength. His strength is 5 plus 1 because of Randolph, so that's a total of 6. 6 to a 4, come on, you can be successful, right? Oh, that is a minus 2, so that's 4 to a 4. Ooh, that was close. We'll get rid of this as an action. I almost forgot about Virgil Gray here. Since we did find one sign of the gods, we have to change this over to Luke. And we're going to go ahead and do the last one here that says heal one horror from Virgil Gray. Beautiful. And then we're going to put this over with Luke. Our second action, we'll go ahead and play this 41 Derringer here. That's going to give us three ammo. We're going to spend three out of our four resources to do this. But we can spend one ammo, do a fight, get plus two to the attack. If we succeed by two or more, we deal two damage. Our third and final action, we're going to go ahead and use Prepared for the Worst. Spend one resource to do this. We're going to search the top nine cards of our deck for a weapon. I'm looking for a weapon that doesn't have ammo. <laughs> because that way, I mean, I know I've got my uh, 41 Derringer. What, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But once that runs out of ammo, oh, a knuckle duster. There we go. That works. Let's see. Oh, contraband. Choose an asset control by investigator. Double the number of ammo tokens. I would love that. But I've got to do the knuckle duster for sure. That will end the investigation phase. We'll move to the enemy phase. We only have the Knight Riders. They do not hunt, so they're just going to stay where they are. Then we're going to go to the end phase. Each generate a resource. Tony's got one. Luke has a total of three. We're going to draw some cards. Luke will go ahead and draw a Warner of Protection. That's beautiful. And Tony will go ahead and draw a Stubborn Detective. So this will go ahead and engage him right now. And it says, while Stubborn Detective is at your location, treat your investigator's text box as if it was blank. Oh... Now, my text box may be blank, but my bounty contracts are not, and that's an enemy. And it says, after an enemy enters play, I'm going to go ahead and throw two resources on him so I can get two resources when I kill this guy. Man, blasted, stubborn detective. How did you find us over here by the volcanoes? What were you doing over here? Were you on vacation? We'll then place our fourth doom. Boy, we're going to run out of time real fast. Let's draw our encounter cards. Our first card is for Tony, and he has Peril and Hidden. 
Revelation secretly add this card to your hand. You cannot play cards or commit cards to skill tests with an odd number of words in their title. A word is any text separated by spaces. Wow, that's interesting and funny. Discard a player card with an even number of words from your hand to discard this card. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm going to be counting words now. That's hilarious and cool at the same time. Oh, we have the Whisper of Hypnos. We've seen this. Let's go ahead and, um, yeah, I'll do Investigation because we're probably not going to be using Investigation. So both of us are minus two on Investigation this round. One other catch-up item. We did find the last clue at our location, so we're going to place one resource on here. So now we have plus one willpower and plus one to our intellect. Our intellect is three, plus one is four. Right now it's minus two, so it's down to two. I think it's time for Luke to try this. He's going to spend one action to move himself up here because that does connect. Yep, there's the green circle. And then we're going to use our third right of seeking here to try and find both of these clues. This is a five shroud location. We are doing this for four plus one due to the Hawkeye. So that's five plus two from the right of seeking. That's seven. Seven to five. Can we do this? It's going to be tight. If we do get this, we get to place another resource token on the Hawkeye folding camera. Don't let me forget that. <laughs> okay, let's see. We get a minus two. Seven to five. Perfect. That's five to five. That'll work. And since we now have three resources on the Hawkeye folding camera, we get plus one sanity. For our free action, we can now unveil this location. What remains of Tyria? The ruins of this settlement are vast, but it is the caverns that lie beneath that draw your interest deep underground you become lost in a forbidden maze of wildly complex corridors impossible to map for days you scour the maze unable to find the path of its core finally you notice a dark shape like a hazy shadow watching you from around a corner you pursue it until it leads you to a tomb in the center of a gargantuan cavern surrounded by ancient tapestries depicting the once great kingdom of tyreria you wonder about the intentions of the shadow that led you here. Was it aiding you or manipulating you? You record the story of Tyria's fall before fleeing to the surface. You have no wish to stay here any longer. Yes, we've got another sign of the gods. So that's our second one. That means I'm going to have to move Virgil Gray over to Tony again. And let's see, what do we want? Let's go ahead and grab the card draw for this one. So we'll grab this card and we have unexpected courage. Cool. We still have one more action, but the first thing I'm going to do is use Mr. Rook. So we're going to exhaust him and then spend one of the secrets. Search the top three, six, or nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to do nine. I'm going to do nine. Come on. Uh, and we get to draw one of these cards. If at least one weakness is drawn, you also have to draw that. And then shuffle your deck. Oh, we have a weakness. Okay, we'll look at that in a second. Let's. Oh, we have our Astounding Revelation. This says, Myrit, uh, when you search your deck and the Astounding Revelation is among the search cards, discard it to either gain two resources or place one secret on an asset. Let's go ahead and gain two resources. I'm, I'm resource uh, hoggy right now. <laughs> uh, we do. We have another right of seeking as well. I, I need to continue doing a good job with our investigations. So let's go ahead and put that in our hand. Then we'll shuffle these. But we now have to resolve, resolve detach from reality. If the dream gate is already in play, flip it over. Otherwise, search your bonded cards for that dream gate and put it into play. In either case, disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to the dream gate. You know what we've got here. And we have at the end of the investigation phase, we can set this out aside and we're going to have to take two horror to get out of here because I'm not going to try and waste an investigation to get six. That does mean with our final action, we'll spend four out of our five resources to go ahead and play our right of seeking, and that will gain three more charges. For action one for Tony, we're going to take care of this stubborn detective. We're going to go ahead and spend one ammo from our 41 Derringer. That gives us a total combat of five plus one for six plus two more is seven. Seven to a three. As long as we beat it by two or more, we'll deal him two points of damage and he will be toast. So we'll draw, we get the skull. The skull is minus two now, so seven minus two is five. Five to the three, that is two, beautiful. So we just took him out with that one shot. <laughs> he came up to us and we just took him right in the back. He had no idea what was going on. He's toast. We now have our ability back and we'll gain two resources because we had two bounties on him, beautiful. You know, I'm realizing that those skulls are going to be terrible as we get more and more of these uh, clues for the gods. Jeez. Okay, action two. Let's go ahead and move here. That is going to have these Night Riders engage us. And remember, the Mount Negranic isn't going to do anything to us because we did search for clues at Baharna. 
let's go ahead and shoot this Knight Rider. We're going to spend another bullet from our 41 Derringer. We only have one left, you guys. But we're attacking for a total of 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And then he has, what, um, 2? <laughs> and we get this. This is a minus 2. We are totally fine. We still have enough. We dealt 2 damage. He has health of 2. So we'll just take this card, put it in the bottom of our deck. But unfortunately, that means he will be able to attack us during the enemy phase. Coincidentally, since we just finished our third action, we'll go ahead and take that one mental trauma or damage because he attacks that way. And then now we will ready everything, generate resources. Luke will have two. Then let's go ahead and draw cards. Oh, and I need to remember, poor Luke, he's going to come out of where he is. I'm going to have him drop at Mount Negranic, right where Tony is. But because of this card, we have to take two horror. That means now he has four horror on him. We'll generate our resources. Tony will have five. Luke will have two. Let's draw our cards. And we get the Storm of Spirits. And we get the Vicious Blow for Tony. We'll drop that fifth Doom right here. Let's draw our encounter cards. Our first card is for Tony. And we have Revelation. Put Dreamlands Eclipse into play. Yeah, we know what this is. Oh, man. When you initiate an investigation, you either take one horror or plus two Shroud. Okay, and that's going to last until the end of the round. And then our next one that we have is the Wondrous Lance. If there are no clues at your location, no, we do have two, because remember, Luke is at Mount Negranic. Uh, then let's gain Surge. Otherwise, attach Wondrous Land to your location. The attached location gets minus two Shroud. After you successfully in investigate the attached location, take one Horror, place one Doom on the current agenda, and discard Wondrous Lance. Mm, this can cause the agenda to advance. Do we cancel that? Um, I mean, yeah, I think so. Because we want as much time as we can, I think, in this scenario, it seems like. So we're going to spend one of our two resources. We're going to go back down to one. We're going to play our Ward of Protection. That's going to give us our fifth, our fifth sanity point of damage. Remember, we now have ten total sanity thanks to the Hawkeye folding camera. Let's start off with Tony this round. He's going to blow this Knight Rider to high heaven. He's going to spend his final ammo. It's going to give him plus two, so he's at a five, six, seven, eight. We will draw one of these, eight, seven, six, five. Ooh, five is still greater than the two. Blew those Knight Riders out of the sky. See ya. Then for action two, we're going to get rid of this silly pandemonium. We are going to discard Vicious Blow. It has two words. So discard a player card with an even number of words in the title and discard this card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I lose my Vicious Blow, but I also get rid of that blasted thing. <laughs> Then what we can do for our third and final action... Oh, you know what I need to do? I think I need to move to Baharna. I'm hoping that with Luke, we can go ahead and get these clues, figure out what it is, and move to here so that we can then move to the next, the next act card. First thing we're going to do as a free action, use Mr. Rook. We're going to go ahead and search nine cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only have one weakness in here now, and we did not get it. Awesome. We didn't get our astounding uh, discovery either. But what I'm looking for is exactly this. I'm going to need something to help me consistently uh, investigate in other rounds. I'm using up my rights of seeking pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one into my hand. Action one, I'm going to get rid of this Law of Ygroth. I need to discard a player card with an even number of skill icons. Boom. Doing it right here. Getting rid of my Storm of Spirits. And we'll get rid of this. We're going to go ahead and try and investigate Mount Negranic. We're going to use our Rite of Seeking. Now that's a 3 for Shroud, but because of this, and I don't want to take additional Horror, it's a 5. And our total willpower is 2 plus the 4 that we have, so that's 6 plus Hawkeye Folding Camera, that's 7. 7 to 5. I don't... Well, actually, the Skull would still work for now. <laughs> so let's see what we get. Oh, we get this, which is a minus 2. Perfect. So that's 5 to a 5. We succeed. Claim both of these clues. We just got 3 XP, you guys. And, oh no, unfortunately that's going to end our activation. But, I can go ahead and use this. And we can exhaust this to either gain 2 resources or draw a card. Yeah, we can get cards anytime. Let's gain 2 more resources that will give us a total of 3. The Likeness of Old As you begin your perilous climb, you realize that you are the only ones who dare to scale the mountain. Although woodsmen and lava gatherers explore its lower slopes, few brave the cliffs higher up to the northern face and certainly none along the southern face of the mountain, which cannot be seen from the city below. You eventually reach a valley of still lava, solid as rock. At the far end, a twisting narrow path ascends the southern slope. 
When you reach the top, you find what you've been searching for. A face carved into the side of the mountain, hundreds of feet tall. The face of one of the great ones, or so it is told. You've uncovered a sign of the gods. That's our third one. Awesome. Then shuffle one set-aside copy of the Tenubrius Night Gaunt in, into the encounter set. Uh, yeah, I probably can do that. This also means Virgil Gray will go over to Luke. We'll go ahead and just heal his one horror. We're just going to use him as a horror soak, really. We unfortunately have to end our investigation phase. I was wanting to use that gate box, but I, I wasn't able to. Because that way we could start off in Baharna. But that's not going to happen. So let's go ahead and generate resources. We have a total of six for Tony. And we'll have four now for Luke. Let's each have us draw a card. We have our lucky cigarette case. Sweet. And then for Luke over here, we have another ward of protection. Beautiful. We'll be placing our sixth out of seventh doom on the agenda. We're also going to discard the Dreamlands Eclipse. Take that. And so with that, we will draw our encounter cards. Our first card is for Tony. And we have the Whisper of Hypnos. How many of these cards are in there? Uh, let's do minus two to... Oh, man. Minus two to our agility. Sure. We're, we're both not going to do our agility anyways. Okay, our second one, we have another one of those. Are you serious? Let's just go ahead and do... No, let's do fight because I'll probably... Yeah, let's do fight. We'll do fight as minus two and we'll do agility. Golly, this is a pain. Let's go ahead and start with Luke this round. The first thing he's going to do is spend one action and three resources to play his four cups. So that allows him to get plus one willpower. It's never a bad thing for him. We'll spend our second action moving to Baharna. And then let's do for a free action Mr. Rook again. We're going to search the top. Let's just do the top three cards. Okay, I don't want to be crazy. Beautiful! Are you serious? I was hoping for calling in favors. I already have a sixth sense in my hand, so I don't need that. Uh, but that's awesome. That means that we can get six cents out soon. And calling in favors also means that we can replace him. And then when we get him back out, he would have a total of three secrets again. Love it. I think our final action then will just be to generate another resource. Our first two actions as Tony, we're going to put down the lucky cigarette and the knuckle duster. That will spend four resources. I have to, because this is a hand, I can only have two hands. I'll discard the 38. I'll leave this out, put this here. We don't have any of these. The accessories, we can have one of them out, so that should be fine. That was two actions. And then for my third action, I'll go ahead and draw a card since we can get resources a little bit easier. Oh, no, another 41 Derringer. Great. We'll end that investigation phase. Tony will gain his third resource. So will Luke, actually. They'll both gain three. Then we'll each draw a card. And we have the Swift Reflexes. Cool. And then for Luke, we have uh, Storm of Spirits. At the end of the round, before moving into that Mythos phase, we are going to move to a new Act card. But because of that, we didn't get rid of the Hunted by Corsairs. We're just not good at either one of those. I just decided to soak it. We'll take two physical damage. Mr. Rook will take one and Luke will take one. And Randolph Carter will take one and Tony will take one. As you board your ship once again, you find the crew loading barrels of trade goods, furs, ore, exotic spices, and the like. We'll make a killing with these back at the mainland, the captain says, clapping your shoulder. Hope you found what you were looking for. Where do you want to head next? Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. The investigators must decide. Uh, choose one. You cannot choose a place you've already uh, visited. If you've already visited each of these areas, proceed to R1. So we can either visit Manar, we can visit the Forbidden Lands, or the Timeless Realm. Let's go ahead and do Manar. Let's try Manar this time. Each investigator will lose all of their clues, so that means Luke's six clues are useless. Remove each location in play from the game. If it's got the victory X, we can put it in the victory display. Each enemy and attachment to those end, uh, locations are discarded. Investigators are not defeated during this process. Put each set-aside Minar location into play. Uh, then we're going to place each investigator at Kaldethrum. Spawn the set-aside Beans of Ib enemy at Ruins of Ib. And then advance to Act 2A, the Doom that Came Before. The ancient fabled land of Minar is one of the oldest regions in the Dreamlands, where wandering nomadic tribes settled city-states that grew in size and power over untold ages, until they became the metropolis they stand today. We have the same items here where we can keep searching, come back whenever we want. If we get 10 signs of the gods, we can go ahead and go to R1. Well, I'll say it. Woof! This is a scenario. <laughs> we are in our third different location. I 
I actually really like this, other than it's a pain to set up and change, just so you know. We have our beans of Ib up here in the ruins of Ib. It has a uh, swarming one times the amount of uh, investigators. So you're going to see there's two cards that are from Tony's deck. Uh, and it has prey investigators at ruins locations only. So it's only going to go towards them in these two locations. It's aloof. It's a hunter. Uh, and then during the enemy attack step of the enemy phase, instead of attacking its engaged investigator, it attacks all investigators its location. Oh, that's cool. Even if it's unengaged. However, now with our mythos phase, we are going to place our seventh doom. So let's go ahead and flip this card. Months have passed since you first set forth from Ulthar. Along the way, you have seen many fabulous places and met many strange and interesting people. Some have been helpful, giving you sage advice or pointing you in the right direction. Most, however, have regarded you with suspicion and wariness. Perhaps it's because you are a dreamer from the outside world, or perhaps it's because you are foolish and accursed enough to seek the forbidden place of the dreamlands. But it is the Corsairs who truly frighten you. Throughout your travels, yeah, they just did damage to us. You spot them pursuing you time and time again. Men of Lang, the inhabitants of the Dreamlands call them. Satire-like creatures with hooves instead of feet and great carved horns protruding from their foreheads. They sail on long black galleys with black sails. You know not why they hunt for you relentlessly, and you are not keen to find out. Shuffle both set aside Corsairs of Lang enemies into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. Perhaps seeking Kaldath is an accursed venture after all. Even so, curiosity gnaws at your mind. What proof could the resting place of the gods hold for you? We can still do the, if we're at a port location, we can resign. Venturing into the unknown has become too dangerous, so you return to safety with the information you've gathered. To start us off with that first round, let's go ahead and investigate Kadethrin. There's got to be something good here. It's veiled. It's a five. <laughs> It is said that the history of this land is written upon the famed cylindricals of this ancient city, great brick pillars that rise into the, st into the sky, studied by eight sages, sorcerers, and scholars alike. Perhaps here you can find answers. We are going to use our right of seeking. Our total willpower is two, plus our four on our card, plus the one from Hawkeye and the one from four cups. That's a total of eight. Eight to the five here. Let's go ahead and see what we get. And we draw a zero. Awesome. So that means we collect both clues. I love that. And that means we can look at the back of this card. Cylinders of Kadetheron. You study the pillars within Kadetheron for many hours, losing yourself in the vast storied histories of the dreamlands. What was first a focused search for the whereabouts of the castle of the gods soon became an obsession with all things inscribed upon the cylinders. Hours, no days, no even weeks. Who knows how much time you lose to your research. Though you learn much, the time you spend here is the boon to those who pursue you. You are only able to pry yourself free from the cylinders when you feel the ominous gaze of something sinister watching you from afar. You've uncovered a sign of the gods. Oh, wow. I was not expecting to find that here <laughs> in this location. So that's going to be our fourth one. That means four done, but unfortunately six to go. We're not even halfway. We will have Virgil Gray move over. And let's see, gain a resource, draw a card. We can get cards so easy. Let's gain a resource. That'll give us our fourth resource. And we'll give that over to Tony. But now we need to shuffle one set aside copy of the Tenubrius Night Gaunt into the encounter deck. For action two, I think I'm going to go ahead and move myself over to here because that is connected. Now it states, after you reveal a skull or cultist token while investigating, you have to discard an asset you control. Oof. I am going to spend one action just doing a regular investigate. I'm at a three for my investigation. I only need a one. I'm going to take the chance. Oh, wait, I have my Hawkeye camera. That will put me at four, four to the one. Beautiful. This is our third action. We get this. Oh, thank goodness. It's only a minus two. We'll still collect this clue. Then because of our jewel here, let's go ahead and draw a card. Let's draw a card this time. So we'll draw the Hawkeye folding camera again. Great. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use our gate box. We're going to spend a charge and exhaust the gate box so that we can disengage from any enemy. We're not engaged right now, but we can go to the dream gate. And then at the end of the round, we can go to any revealed location. Well, all those locations are revealed. So I'm hoping if I can get Tony to just collect that one clue over there, maybe I can just go to the other location and find those clues next round. <laughs> all right, Tony, we all believe in you. We're going to move into this location and we're going to do cluing. <laughs> Our investigation is three, so it's not terrible. We can get a minus two and still succeed. I believe in us. 
I the uh, a, a skull is gonna fail, uh, and the auto fail is gonna fail, and that's actually really it. So let's see, we got that beautiful. That's a minus two, and so that puts us to a one. It's exactly exactly what we wanted. So we'll go ahead and get that clue. That means that we can, I believe, unveil that location. Yep, as long as that location has no clues, we can unveil it. Ghosts of the Dead. It is said that the people of Srinath were the ones who destroyed the city of Ib thousands of years ago. From what you can gather, the inhabitants of Ib have committed no crime other than possessing a disturbing appearance and carving strange sculptures upon the grey monoliths within their city. However, the retribution Sarnath faced was far greater than his own sin. Even now, long after the destruction of Ib, creatures resembling the city's inhabitants still haunt the nameless lake, hunting down intruders like the warriors of Sarnath who destroyed their civilization so long ago. Intruders such as yourself. Oh boy. Remember that the investigators know what happened to Ib. Flip this back over. I then think with my final action, I'll just go ahead and generate one resource. I'm going to stay where I am, so hopefully that way when Luke jumps to that other location, we don't uh, bring this guy with because he is a hunter, so he would come and hunt and hunt us down, really. At the end of the investigation phase, Luke will go ahead and appear here in Srinath. And now, unfortunately, the beans of Ib are going to attack for three mental damage on Tony. The nice thing is we have two allies that can soak that. Uh, Randolph will take one, and Virgil Grey will take two. Now, you know, so much to track. Randolph has, if we reveal this symbol during a skill test, which we did, we can exhaust him to draw two cards. Yeah, we definitely did that. You guys saw me do that, right? <laughs> we got Tony's 38 and a Knuckle Duster. Oh, Tony's 38. Oh, that's nice. Let's then go ahead and generate resources for the end of the round. Luke's going to have five. Tony has five. Reach going to draw a card. Oh, we got another Swift Reflexes. And what is Luke going to find? Luke's going to find Shriveling. Oh, he could actually maybe do some attacking. We're going to drop our first Doom on here. We only can hold eight more. We'll start off with Tony. Let's reveal our first card. If there are no clues on your location, discard Wondrous Land and again search. Yeah, uh, Runes of Ib. We already took care of that. So let's just discard that. We get the Dreamlands of Eclipse. I swear I draw this every time. Uh, yeah, either take a Horror or plus two to the Shroud. Okay, and then this one is for Luke. Luke has put Prismatic pr uh, Phenomenon into play in your threat area. The first time you perform one of the following actions, each round it costs one additional action. After you successfully investigate a location, instead of discovering clues, discard this. No, I think I have something for that. Yes, I do. I have my Ward of Protection. I'll spend one resource. Oh boy, that's, that's going to give me my 6 out of 10. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that to me. I'll do it to Mr. Rook. Mr. Rook will take one phys uh, mental trauma or mental damage, and we're going to cancel that. Let's start off with Luke. We're going to do our final rites of seeking. Oh, man. Uh, we are going to draw. Let's see. We're a total of eight. We're at eight total um, willpower. Let's draw, and we get a minus one. So eight minus one is seven. Now there's a forced effect. I should read this. After you successfully investigate Sarnath by one or less. Didn't happen. Take one horror. Ha! <laughs> That's not going to happen. We're going to gain two clues for that. And that means our right of seeking, though, is done. No longer collecting two clues at a time. Boy, that's going to stink. Uh, it says, Veiled Sarnath cannot be flipped over unless the investigators know what happened to Ib. Yes, we know what happened to Ib. Although this city-state was founded ages ago and stood for over a thousand years, it is no more. The tales tell of a single night in which Sarnath fell. Now very little of it remains, only a vast march where the city once stood tall and proud. Among the ruins you find no standing buildings but rubble of marble, brick, and shalandini. But as you approach the remains, lightning spreads the sky. There is a blinding flash. As you blink your eyes, everything changes. Where before no city stood, now there looms a ghostly image of Sarnath as it once was. Near the lake where the lightning struck, you find a curious and ancient idol of green stone. It is coated with seaweed and chiseled in the likeness of a great water lizard. One of the gods of this realm, perhaps? You've uncovered another sign. Place one resource on the scenario reference card. That will be our fifth one. That also means Virgil will come back over to Luke, and so he'll... Um, uh, heal one of his um, sanity. With that, Luke will go ahead and take his second action and move move over here to Kadetheron, and then we're going to have uh, Tony play something. 
we're going to go ahead and use both swift reflexes. Now, this is going to cost us four out of our five resources. We can play during any investigator's turn, immediately take an action as if it was your turn, and it does not count as our total from our three actions from before. What we're going to do for one action is engage the beans of Ib, and then for our second action, we're going to attack them. We've got our knuckle dusters here, which state that we can just do a regular fight and it deals plus one damage, but he gains retaliate. So if we fail, <laughs> you know what's going to happen. He's going to hit us back for one mental damage. Now we have to get above a four. We're at a five plus one is six. So six to a four. Let's go ahead and draw. We get one of these. It's a minus two. That's four to a four. Beautiful. Two points of damage. They only have one health. So both of their spawns are gone. We'll put that at the bottom of our deck. On this side, for our final action, we're going to go ahead and do our calling in favors. Spend one resource. We're going to put Mr. Rook back into our hand. He's going to heal to full. I love that. We're going to search the top nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we have another one of those. Oh, first of all, we get this. When you search your deck and you find this, either gain two resources or place one secret on an asset you control. Unfortunately, we don't have anything out with secrets, so let's just go ahead and gain the two resources, discard this, and we do have a Mr. Rook. Beautiful. So we're gonna put out a new Mr. Rook. He's gonna gain three secrets. That's just awesome. Finally, what we're going to do is we're gonna spend one of his secrets and exhaust him to look at three cards, and we've got Drawn to the Flame. Beautiful. I'm gonna put that into my hand. Uh, really, what I'm trying to do now, look at my deck. This is the size of my deck. If I could run through this and get those rights of seeking in the discard pile and put them into my deck, I can find them and use them again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to discard a card this round though. I've got way more than eight cards in my hand. Moving to Tony, we're attacking for six to a four. Let's go ahead and see what we get. That's another minus two. Now I already used this, I believe, this turn. Oh no, that was last turn. Beautiful. I'll exhaust him to draw two more cards. And I get Leo de Luca and Steadfast. Oh, but I can't put out Leo. Uh, otherwise, I can't have two. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about this. Oh, as I'm talking, though, <laughs> Beans of Ib, we did just defeat, and it's a victory one, so I'll put that in the victory display. For action two, we're going to generate a resource. And then action three, we're going to run. We're going to run over here to Kadetheron. That way we can get out of here ASAP. We're going to move into that upkeep phase. First thing is we're going to generate resources. That will give two, four, six to Luke. And we'll have three for Tony. We'll each draw our cards. Oh, and we have Tony's query. Spawn, location farthest from Tony, Morgan, aloof. Forced after Tony's query enters play, place one doom on it, then place one resource on it. Oh, we're just going to, I'm not going to put any of that on there because we're going to move from this location. He's going to get discarded. <laughs> that is a great. That's great. And we get knowledge is power for our uh, Luke deck. Now, my my Luke deck has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can only have eight cards in my hand, so I'm going to discard one Dave Renfield. And let's see. Let's do one Storm of Spirits. Yeah. So now we have our eight cards. We're at the end of the round, and we're at a port location. Let's go ahead and flip this. We have your options in this region exhausted. You make your way back to your ship. The captain orders the crew to get ready to leave port. Wasn't sure if you'd be back in time, but here you are, the captain says with a grin. Well, where to? I like this captain. Search the encounter deck, discard pile, and all play areas for the beans of Ib enemy or remove it from the game. Oh, well, I already put him out, already killed him. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Investigators must decide. You cannot choose a place that you've already visited. We can't go to Oriab. We can go to the Forbidden Lands or the Timeless Realm. Let's try the Timeless Realm. What do you say? We have here, each investigator loses their clues, just like normal. Remove each location from play or place it in the victory display. Each enemy and its attachments to those locations are discarded. Yes, take that, Tony's query. <laughs> place these three locations into play and place each investigator at Silephias. Shuffle the set-aside Crawling Mist into the encounter deck. Search the encounter deck for one copy of A Priest of a Thousand Masks and spawn it at Hazut Clegg. If there are three or four investigators, search the encounter deck. No, okay. Uh, then just shuffle the encounter deck and go to the King's Decree. Much of the valley realm of Uth Naragi, ruled by the dreamer Karunis, eludes the grasp of time. Nothing here ages or falls into despair. It is a realm of wonders and marvels. How many years might pass here before you even notice? Huh. Now, I have to at the end of the round also discard this. I don't know if I took this into account, you guys. If I didn't, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to just make it work. 
I'm going to have Virgil Gray take one more horror, and that will catch us up, just in case I didn't uh, do the plus two shroud. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and drop this Doom here. I need to draw my Mythos cards, but let's look at the board quick. We have Serenian over here, Celephius here, and the Hazuth Clegg here. We've got this Priest of a Thousand Mask. I shuffled three of them into the encounter deck, or was it two of them? I can't remember. Uh, we finally are seeing one now. While the investigators have uncovered, we're at four or more, we're at less than six. It's going to have plus two health, so it has a total of four health. Oof. Let's go ahead and draw cards. Our first one is for Luke. Luke will get the Hunted by Corsairs. Oh, we know what this is. It's all about taking two damage. I'll put that on to the uh, act. Our second card is for Luke. And we have the, oh, we have another Priest of a Thousand Masks. Great. So he will automatically engage Luke. And I do want to mention, he also has plus one fight and plus one evade. So he's a 3-3 three, three with four health. Oh, and you know what? I do think I'm going to have Tony drop two bounties on him. He has a total of four health, so I could put four. I want to keep a couple just in case. Let's start this investigation round with Tony. Now, I know this priest is engaged with, uh, with Luke, not Tony. I just have him over here for recording purposes. You can attack enemies that are at your location, even if you're not engaged. The only disadvantage is if you miss, you deal your damage to the investigator that's there. So I'm being a little risky here. Uh, I am also, though, because I am Tony, and I don't think I've even done this yet, this scenario. I can take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to engage or fight an enemy with one or more of your bounties on it. Oh, I guess I could engage him. No, I'm going to take the chance. I'm not going to engage him, so I'm going to do a free fight action on him. I've got my uh, knuckle dusters, so that means I already am doing two damage. Oh, yeah, my combat is six to his four. Oh, that's actually, well, let's do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Let's see what we get. We get an auto fail. Well, that's that's wonderful. So instead, we're going to deal R2 damage. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're going to deal R2 damage to Luke Robinson. Luke is going to go ahead and have one damage be put on Mr. Rook and one damage on himself. Mr. Rook will have one damage on him, but the big thing is he will have a total of two damage. He only has five health. Well, that was our free action. <laughs> we utterly failed. We punched our own friend in the face. Let's try this a second time, shall we? Okay, let's see. Oh, that's a plus one. Boom. We just dealt him two damage. Uh, we just need to do two more. So that was action one. Action two. Let's see. Okay, that's a zero. Boom. Done. We'll gain two resources, and this guy's toast. I think for my third and final action, I'm just going to drop my Tony's 38 Long Colt. It's going to cost us three and I'll go ahead and discard my 41 Derringer that I have here because it doesn't have any ammo on it. Luke has a total of two hands, so let's go ahead and put out another Hawkeye folding camera. It's going to cost us two, and if we get the last clue, we can get another plus one to our wisdom and then later another plus one to our intellect. I feel like that's a great idea. Doing that means he only has four total resources left. Then let's for free use one of our secrets on Mr. Rook. We will draw, let's just do three cards. Uh, beautiful. And hmm, play a spell ritual from your hand. Uh, you know what? Actually, I might do this so that because I have a sixth sense in my hand and this would allow me to play the sixth sense for a cost of nothing. Sweet. Let's then go ahead for action to use Uncage the Soul. Play a spell or ritual card from your hand, reducing its cost by three. We'll put our sixth sense down then for free, but we are going to have to discard because you only have two arcane slots. So I'll discard this one Rite of Spirits to put this Sixth Sense out. Then I think as a fast action, let's go ahead and play Knowledge is Power. Play only during your turn. Choose a Tome or Spell Asset you control or reveal one from your hand. Resolve an action or a free action ability that on that asset, ignoring all costs. And then if that asset was in your hand, you may discard it or draw one card. It's kind of an amazing card if you ask me. That means we're going to use our Rite of Seeking that we have right here. We're going to try and collect these two clues. Our total willpower is 4, plus 1 with our Hawkeye folding camera, that's 5, plus the uh, four, 4 cups, that's 6, plus the 2 here, that's 8. 8 to 2, and we reveal a 0. Boom. We just got both of these clues. Let's go ahead and unveil this. Carter knew that they were come to the land of Oth Nargil and the marvelous city of Silephias. Swiftly there came into sight the glittering minarets of that fabulous town, and the untarnished marble walls with their bronze statues, and the great stone bridge where Naraxa joined the sea. Advice of the King Randolph stops in one of the streets of Silphias to meet with the old chief of the city's cats, 
and you recall that your companion once told you that Ulthar was not the only city of dreamlands in which these curious creatures dwell. The cat informs Randolph where he can find his old friend, and you are surprised when your companion leads you to a rose crystal palace in the center of the city. Here you meet with King Karanis, who rules this region. When you tell Karanis of your quest, he indicates that you may find what you're looking for in the great temple that lies in the center of Hazuth Clegg, a city beyond his timeless realm. But this advice comes with a warning. Once you enter the temple of unattainable desires, you might not ever leave. Ugh. Remember that you've besieged the king. Shuffle one set-aside copy of the Tenebrius Night Gaunt into the encounter deck. Well, lucky for us, we have all of the ones that we can. There aren't any more here that we can put into the encounter deck. Yay! Since we did obtain the last clue in this location, we're going to put one resource on our other Hawkeye folding camera. That will give us another plus one willpower. <laughs> That's amazing. We'll then use our final action moving over here to the Serenaean. But in order to do that, it states here as an additional cost for you to move there, you need to choose and discard a card. I don't love it, but I'm going to discard my unexpected courage. We've completed the investigation phase. We'll move to the enemy phase. This priest doesn't move. No one has any enemies engaged. So we'll just move right to upkeep. We'll each generate one resource. That will be resource number three for Tony and five for Luke. And then let's have each of them draw a card. And we get, oh boy, we get narcolepsy for Luke. That's going to be his weakness. It says put narcolepsy into play in your threat area. You cannot take actions, trigger abilities, or play cards. Take an action, wake up, discard narcolepsy. After you take damage or horror, discard this. Okay, so you have to just take an action to get rid of it. I guess it's not the end of the world, but I'm going to put that in front of him. We get overpower for Luke. No, that's actually not for Luke. That's for Tony. Sorry. Our time is ticking, you guys. Three of doom. We've got nine here. We need to make sure that we resign before we get the total of nine. Our first card will be for Tony. And we have, oh, here's the Tenebrious Night God. It's a haunt hunter. When Tenebrious Night God leaves, play as a result of an act setup. Set it aside. And then after resolving the act setup, put it back into play at any city location. <laughs> so it follows you. Oh, that's crazy cool. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Easily, uh, you can run away from it easily. But we'll probably just kill it with uh, being Tony. Oh, yeah. And I want to put, I'm going to leave, I'm going to put one bounty on it. I only have three left. So I'm just going to put one on him. For Luke, he will draw the Silly Whispers. So let's go ahead and minus two our agility again. <laughs> that's what I always pick. Let's start off with Luke. First thing we're going to do is wake up. We'll take that action, get rid of this narcolepsy. We'll spend that last secret from Mr. Rook. We'll draw one, two, three, four, five. So I think we have to do the three. So we'll do three, um, uncage the soul, shriveling. Yeah, I mean, I have all of these. So let's go ahead and put another six cents into our hand. We've got ourselves two more actions. Let's use our six cents. So we're going to use our willpower to do our investigation. Our willpower is four, plus one for Hawkeye, plus another one for Hawkeye, so that's four, five, six, and another one for four cups, seven, seven to three. We got this, we got this, and we get this symbol. So if we get that, that is a minus two, and then it says, um, if it's revealed, you may choose a revealed location connected to your location. You're now investigating, investigating that location. So we can use two for a shroud, AKA, we got this no problem. Let's try it for our third action. Come on. Basically, we just don't need the auto fail. I think anything else will work. And we got a zero, perfect. So that means we can pick this up. Oh, and because we revealed one of these symbols, I'm gonna go ahead and draw one card. I'm almost through my deck. And we have another drawn to the flame. The beautiful city of Saramanen is a refuge from all the world's ills. In this turreted cloud castles that hang in the heavenly sky, time slows to a halt. The allure of this city is ageless. You could lose yourself for years within its marbled streets and perfect gardens and never notice the difference. It is so peaceful that you nearly forget your quest as well as the fact that your physical body still sleeps in the real world. Even so, you cannot help but wonder, would it be better to simply stay in this tranquil realm and let your mind remain at peace? even while your body ages and withers away. Each investigator at this location heals two damage and gains two resources. That is, that couldn't come at a better time. Uh, sweet, so I'll heal these two damage and then I will gain, I now have two, four, uh, six, seven resources. You have uncovered a sign of the gods. Please place one resource. 
Beautiful. So that's number six, you guys. And that means Virgil will go back over to Tony and we'll heal him by one sanity. Over here for Tony's turn, he's going to blow this guy to bits. He's going to use one of his Tony 38's Long Colts bullets. His total strength is five plus one is six plus one is there seven. Seven to four. This will deal two damage. And we've got a plus one. So he'll take two damage for that. Let's do our second action. Oh, hey, by the way, this is a free action. We'll use this as our free action. And let's see. We will grab this. Are you? There's only one plus one in here, but sometimes you draw them twice. Wonderful. So we'll gain one resource. And actually, this is great. We're going to gain one resource. We're also going to put one bounty back on here because we defeated an enemy with our long colts. Let's also go ahead and activate our lucky cigarette for both of those because our skill tests were succeeded by two or more each time. So we'll draw two cards and we get sleight of hand and another overpower. <laughs> We've used one action since we could use our extra action for attacking someone with a bounty. I'm going to be a little bit brash because we need to keep moving. I'm going to move here for action two. That priest is going to engage us and I'm going to go ahead and attack him. His fight is currently a four. We have one more action that we can use to attack him. So we have fight of five plus one is Randolph Carter is six. And then we're going to use the knuckle duster for this one. So we're not adding any additional except for we are going to use overpower. That's going to make it an eight. This is only going to deal two damage and he could retaliate on us if we fail at hitting him. So let's see what we get. Oh, that's a minus two. Oh, guess what? With Randolph Carter, we can draw two cards because of that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Oh, here, that is what we want. Contraband. Amazing. Our priest here has two points of damage. I will take that. Unfortunately, though, now we're going to move to that enemy phase, and he is going to attack us just for one mental damage, and we'll just put that onto Virgil Gray. We'll move to the upkeep phase. We'll generate resources. Luke has two, four, six, eight. Uh, uh, Tony over here will have five. Let's draw cards. And we have Uncage the Soul and another Leo de Luca. Our fourth Doom, though, is being placed. Also, we have our agility back. We'll draw our encounter cards, starting with Tony. Tony will get another one of these secretly add to your hand. You cannot commit cards to skill tasks with an odd number of total skill icons. Discard one that has even. Okay, I've got to look at hand sizes, too. And then we have Wondrous Land. If there are no clues... Oh, wait, this is for Luke. There's no clues in that location. Great, that just gets Surge. Oh, he gets a Tenebri Tenebrious Night Gaunt. Let's go ahead and drop one bounty on him. Tony had to discard four cards to get his hand back down to eight. <laughs> We're going to start off with Tony this round. He's going to try and take this priest out. He has a total of six for his strength compared to the four. And we draw a skull that's terrible. And unfortunately, so that's a failure. And now, because we have six or more clues, this guy has plus one damage and gains retaliate. So he attacks for one damage and one mental. Unfortunately, that means Tony has to pick that up unless we want to lose one of our uh, guys here, one of our allies. I don't want to do that. So come on, we can do it. Let's see. We get a cultist, which means we have to draw again. Oh my god goodness and we get a minus two i think that's okay we are at uh five plus one is six six minus two is four four to four we are good that's the two damage Whew, that takes them out action three we're gonna go ahead and run over to the ceremonian that means we have to discard a card and i'm gonna go ahead and discard uh oh man this is terrible these are all so good but i get i'm yeah i'm gonna discard sleight of hand i don't really need sleight of hand uh, and then for a free action, oh, I'm sorry, you guys, we're flipped over. For our free bounty action, we're going to pull this Tenebrious Night Gone, and we're going to engage it from Luke. Yeah, it means we're going to take another physical and mental damage, but that's going to allow Luke to go over and get these last clues. <laughs> Hopefully it works. So moving to Luke's turn, we're going to have Luke move over to here, and to move out of Ceremonian, you have to discard a card. So what we're going to discard is the six cents in our hand, and then let's do Draw to the Flame. This card states we draw the top card of the encounter deck and then discover two clues at our location. So let's see what it is. It is the stupid whispering. <laughs> I hate this card and love it all at the same time. Agility, of course, we're going to do agility. That does mean, though, we've collected these two clues, and then we can unveil this location. 
In stark contrast to the rest of the timeless realm, Hazoth Clegg is a decaying city of dingy, twisted streets and basalt towers that lies outside the reach of the kings of Cephalias. Even simple rules of architecture do not seem to apply here, and though there are gods venerated within the city's many temples, none of them are a reputable sort that you seek. Deep within the rundown city of Hazoth Clegg, along the streets of the Pantheon, lies the Temple of Unattainable Desires. It is a grand temple of onyx, its iron gates fashioned to look like a mass of twisted and intermingled serpents with amethyst eyes. Lanterns cast a baleful red glow at the entrance. You shudder at the thought of what profane ritual might transpire within its unhallowed halls, and yet your gut tells you this awful place may hold the answers you seek. Put the set-aside Temple of Unattainable Desire locations into play and then flip this over. Uh-huh, this isn't going to give us a secret. The way into the temple is barred shut. You cannot enter the Temple of Unattainable Desires unless an investigator has beseeched the king. Yes, we already did that! The interior of the temple is even darker and more twisted than the city in which it dwells. Hooded lanterns bathe its halls in dim crimson light and no friendly faces get uh, greet you within. Well, we have one more action. We can move into here because we are at the plus location. So let's do it. Let's move into here, and next round, so that's going to be our third action, next round I have another one of these. <laughs> so we can go ahead and collect both of those, and then unveil it, and then hopefully run back to uh, Celephias. Unfortunately though, moving into that enemy phase, you know what's happening, that Tenebrius Night Gaunt, it's going to give Tony his third point of damage and his second point of sanity. He only has three sanity left. We'll then move to the upkeep phase. Luke will get two, four, six, eight, his ninth resource, and Tony has six. Then let's go ahead and draw cards. We get prepared for the worst. And then uh, let's see, for Luke, Luke will get the knowledge is power. Here comes our fifth doom. Oh man, we've got to make sure we can get out before that ninth one is placed. We do need to remember, we get to discard these silly whispers. Get out of our head, get out of our head. <laughs> Okay, let's draw our first one. This is for Tony, and we have the Corsairs of Lang. Oh, I knew they'd catch up with us. Spawn at the nearest city or surface location. Unfortunately, that's right where we are. <laughs> and uh, it does have, after Corsairs of Lang attacks via its alert keyword, it gets minus three of eight for the remainder of the phase. Okay, so we now have two enemies on us. Oh, and I'm going to definitely put one bounty on him. So he will have a bounty, just so you know. And then uh, let's draw our second one for Luke. And we have the Dreamlands Eclipse. Put the Dreamlands Eclipse into play next to the agenda deck. Yeah, we know what this is. Either you take a horror or you have to get plus two to the investigation. Uh, or the shroud value, I should say. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this is a free action. Knowledge is power. Let's go ahead and do the right of seeking for free and collect both those clues. Yeah, this is a five, but you know what our total intellect is? Or I should say willpower. We start with our basic four. We have two because of the Hawkeye folding camera, so that's six, plus another one with the four cups, that's seven, plus two from the right of seeking, that's a total of nine. Nine to five. Come on, uh, let's see what we get. We get a zero, beautiful. So that means we get to collect both of these and we can unveil that location. In the deepest section of the temple lies its greatest hall and its greatest curse. The moment you pass under its low, narrow doorway, you find yourself in another realm altogether. A twisted, hellish version of the city outside. The streets are lined with tattering houses that lean together so that they almost form tunnels, blotting out what passes for the sky in this nightmarish realm. Only a single baleful star shines in the perpetual twilight visible between the leaning basalt towers and twisted streets. Put the set-aside city which appears on no map location into play. Are you serious? Another location! <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, look at this. This location, it's a victory too, but I have four clues here, and it's a six. It states here, for each priest of a thousand masks at the city which appears on no map reduces its shroud by one. After you fail a skill test while investigating the city which appears on no map, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a priest of a thousand masks, spawn it here, and shuffle the encounter deck. Well, I feel like I've gone down the rabbit hole this far, and the nice thing about Luke is that we can get here, try and take care of these, and then we can jump into our gate box and get out of there ASAP. We don't have to walk all the way back. So let's do it. 
going to be the question on if we can actually if we can actually succeed. So we'll move here. This is only action one. This is action one because we did that free action to use our right of seeking, which was amazing. Let's try using our sixth sense here. We're going to boost up our willpower by two. So normally it is four, five, six, seven. This is going to give us an eight, nine, nine to a six. <laughs> Let's see what we get. We get a cultist, which means we have to draw another one and we're going to get a minus one. And what's awesome about the cultist is we can then use one of these other uh, shroud values that's adjacent to it so that it will work. We will gain one of these clues. Now that was action two. We also, because we have this jewel out here, let's go ahead and draw one card. And this is going to be our last card in our deck. So let's draw this. We've got shriveling into our hand. And then that means we're going to have to take one sanity hit. So we'll go to our sixth sanity because now we can shuffle our discard pile into a new deck. Now I have to remember that this Dreamlands Eclipse is here, but we're still okay because we could have used the three on this location adjacent. It would add plus two. That's a five. Five compared to our nine or eight. We're good. Whew. Okay. So that was one. Now let's go ahead. Yeah, let's do, let's do another one. We're going to take one sanity damage, which will put us at seven. So, and we're going to use Mr. Rook in our hand so that we get all the way up to eight. It's an eight to a six. Uh, eight to a six, eight to a six. Let's see what we get. We get the cultist again. Uh, and then we get a zero. Oh my gosh. And that means we made it. We made the second one. So we've, for our third action, collected this clue. That means that as long as nothing terrible happens here, we can do Drawn to the Flame at the beginning of the next round, get both of these, and then get our butts back to Celephias. Tony, on the other hand, is a little bit preoccupied with two enemies. He's going to go ahead and spend his first free action to attack this Corsairs. Just because its might is only two, we're going to go ahead and use our Knuckle Dusters. So we're just doing six to a two. We'll draw... Oh my gosh, minus four. That's actually still okay. That would mean we do two damage to him. <laughs> Come on. Let's see if we can take him out here. So he has two damage. He has four total health. We'll draw a zero for the second one. He's gone. We'll go ahead and generate one resource. And that was action one. Action two, we're going to do the same thing. Use our knuckle duster on this guy. He's a four. We're doing four to a six let's still do it. Uh, that's minus two. We'll go ahead and draw two cards because of Randolph Carter. Uh, we've got uh, Contraband and On the Hunt. And then he has two points of damage. And then we'll go ahead and use our final bullet on the 39 Long Colt. That's going to make us a seven to a four. Just a little bit more likely we can hit him. Oh, beautiful. There's a star. What happens with a star? Plus two. Place one bounties on the bounties contract. And we shot with our 38. So that's going to give us one resource from the, the actual long 38 and then one for the star. Awesome. Let's move to that upkeep phase. Luke will generate a resource. Two, four, six, eight, ten. He has. Tony has two, four, six, now seven. Jeez. And then let's go ahead and draw cards. And we have uh, the ward of protection for Luke. Oh, that's awesome. And on the hunt for Tony. Tony's now going to have to get rid of another four cards, so that way he only has eight, which includes that silly card that he got before. We'll place our sixth Doom here. We literally have essentially two more rounds. We'll then draw our encounter cards, and we have the Crawling Mist. Are you serious? Well, at least that's for uh, Tony. Tony can maybe handle it. <laughs> it preys on most card in hand, but since he drew it, oh, it's a massive one, so we're just going to put it at his location. And then, uh, yeah, then we have Luke. Luke has Prismatic Phenomenon. Uh, let's see. The first time you perform one of the following actions, each round it costs one additional action. After you successfully investigate a location, instead of discovering clues, discard. Oh, you know, maybe I'm... No, I don't know if we're going to try and go to another location. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. I'm going to go ahead and ward, ward this. This means, though, we're going to have our eighth out of 10 actually out of 11 now because we have two hawkeye folding cameras awesome spend one resource and we're going to cancel that with a water protection take that are you guys ready for this let's do it we're going to spend one action to do drawn to the flame draw the top card of the encounter deck and then discover two clues at your location so that top card let's grab it 
what we have is hunted by corsairs <laughs> okay so if we moved the act now we would take a total of four damage wow but that does mean we've collected these two clues and let's go ahead and look at the city which appears on no map the baleful star you traverse the tangled streets of this dark, abandoned realm for what seems like many hours. You cannot tell the passage of time, for the star that hangs above you never moves, and the rest of the sky is empty and devoid of all light. Finally, you reach the square in the center of town, directly below the Baleful Star. Its red glare shines down on a statue depicting an otherworldly abomination. The inscription in the stone before the statue is riddled with astrological symbols and strange names, but nothing more. The moment you read one of the names, the city begins to collapse and you are whisked away by an incomprehensible force. You awaken several hours later, your head spinning. Your arms and legs are covered in thin, bloody in incisions. Ooh. You've uncovered two signs of the gods. Oh, you better believe that was worth it. We'll go from six to eight. Discard each enemy here. Move each investigator here to the Temple of Unattainable Desires. That also means Luke will take uh, control of Virgil Grey and he'll heal one sanity. With eight signs of the gods, I think I'm going to call it at this point. <laughs> what we're going to do, I was actually going to jump into, our, my, into my gate box, but I don't think I'm going to have to. Because action one was to do what we just did, and it pushed us here. So action two, we can come here, and action three, we'll move here. Then what we'll do for action one with Tony is we're simply going to move out of this area. Since this enemy is massive, he's not going to follow us. He will go ahead and simply deal one physical and one mental damage to him. So that will mean he has four physical damage and three mental damage. So Tony's going to take this action. If you're at a port location, resign. Venturing into the unknown has become too dangerous for you. If no resolution was reached because each investigator resigned, we'll go to resolution one. You ventured far and wide from the quaint cobbled villages of the Kingdom of Sky to wondrous lands you would have never in a hundred years imagined. You learned much of the dreamlands and of the gods who dwell atop unknown Kadath. Though you are closer to your goal, you still don't know its precise location. In the meantime, your quest grows deadlier with each passing day. No matter where you go, foul, nightmarish creatures pursue you across the land and sea, winged beasts with no faces, horned corsairs wielding razor-sharp cutlasses and co commanding great black galleys. The agents of your demise bear many shapes. You decide to return to your ship, safe from the many dangers of the dreamland. Or so you thought. Unfortunately, your ship is no safe haven. When you return, the crew and captain are nowhere to be found. There are no signs of the struggle, but Virgil, who returned to the ship earlier to prepare for your next departure, is also missing. I fear the worst, Randolph mourns. If those fiendish corsairs captured him, they are in dire trouble. There are agents of the other gods on the outside whose soul and messenger is the crawling chaos Nyra Lepthic. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> the mere utterance of this name causes you to shudder, though you do not know why. You ask where they might have been taken. As if discussing any other port of call, he replies, The beast who command their black galleys sail from the moon. If we are to rescue Virgil and the other companions, that is where we must go. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. For each sign of the gods, the investigators unveiled during the scenario record one tally mark next to the evidence of Kadath. So I think we already had one from before, plus our eight. That's going to be nine. That feels pretty good. In your campaign log, record Virgil was captured. Captured. In your campaign log, record Randolph eluded capture. If you're playing the Dream Quest and the Web of Dreams as an interconnected eight-part campaign, and you've not played Scenario 2B, A Thousand Shapes of Horror, proceed to that scenario. So that is where we're going to go. Well, we smashed it for victory points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I had been willing, I could have taken out that crawling mist probably. That would have been 12. But <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm exhausted. That was over two days of recording, an entirely long scenario, quite fun. I didn't even see one of the locations, I think the forbidden one, so I could play this again and totally have a different experience. I really like the scenario, but do know it is not short, uh, especially when you have to reset up each different uh, set of three locations, but I really, really, I really liked it. I'd play this again in a heartbeat. Let me know what you guys think we should do with 11 XP. Remember that Luke technically has 13 if you include two for doing a spell specifically. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in our next scenario, A Thousand Shapes of Horror.